Today, in this reading of Unwind Your Mind Back to God, written by David Hofmeister and read by Tarana Singh, we continue with Laying the Foundation, Book 1. This is Chapter 4, Section 3, Touching on Manifesting and Prayer. David The Holy Spirit does not really work in this world. He is in the higher mind. He is this abstract light that shines and reminds us that we are whole and complete. Then we have these dark beliefs that we hang on to. And the way the shadows come out on the screen can be interpreted like the Holy Spirit brought my car back or the Holy Spirit got me a parking space or the Holy Spirit got me to win the lottery, etc. That is still attributing something in form as if the Holy Spirit is moving things around. What is actually happening is that he is working with us in our mind as we let go of our concepts and beliefs our mind opens up to his light. It is the interpretation of what we see that seems to witness that we are being taken care of. This is a very subtle point, but if you go back to the belief that the Holy Spirit works in the world, you start asking metaphysical why questions, such as, why did he help me? But the script is written. Look through the right lens and you will be at peace. For some people, the whole idea of manifesting is a big step. If you perceive yourself as powerless, helpless, a victim, a little peon, and you start to use affirmations and things start to seem to happen, that can be a witness to the idea that your mind is powerful. And that is a big step from, I am a powerless victim. The course just takes it a step further. It gives you the way to give the powerful mind over to the goal of peace of mind, as opposed to accumulating this and that. Like I said earlier, Manifesting can be a stepping stone. Friend, so we have to know that our mind is powerful. David, I think a good example is in the Song of Prayer, the little 20-page pamphlet that Jesus dictated. It deals with the topic that we are just touching upon now. When the mind is in a deceived state, it believes in specifics. Specific persons, specific everything in this world. It has forgotten the abstract reality of light and spirit. In a deceived state, it cannot help but pray for specifics whether it be for desires for things to work out or perhaps just wanting someone to not make so much noise or having goals and ambitions for specific things like a good job. The mind prays without ceasing and when it believes in specifics It cannot help but ask for specifics. But ultimately, as described in here, 
we really go inward. Our purpose becomes very single and unified, just wanting God above all else. Our prayer becomes unified such that we literally want God above all else and ask always, What is your will for me, Father? This is the question we move towards. Helen Shuckman was a good example. She was quite fearful of Jesus. She would ask him for green pantyhose, you know. Where do I get green pantyhose? She is the scribe of the gorse and has this highly trained ability to tune in and listen to Jesus speak to her. And she wants to know where to get green pantyhose or a Borgana coat as a specific preference. What does he do? He tells her where to go. He knows how important the course coming into the world is. So to speak, he is trying to save time. And he knows it would be a delay if she just goes about in her analytic analytical ways of shopping all over New York City for the green pantyhose or for a coat. Time is precious, so he joins with her where she thinks she is and he helps her. I think that is a good lesson for all of us in the sense that when we pray, there is a gradual letting go of desires for specifics and things of the world. It may seem to take the form of getting our prayers answered in that way for a while, but slowly we get clear in our mind and begin asking in any situation, What do I want?